always going to go for your love. And everybody else, the others, are holding you back. Everybody else is holding you back. That is normally how we think about things. Because we do not have the best grades because our teachers suck. Or the exam was very evil. And I couldn't pass the exam. Uh, remember school time. You maybe sucked in one of the courses because your teacher sucked. Or he didn't like you. So it's the others. In Isaac it's the same. You try to raise uh, internships at the company. The internship doesn't want to have them. Oh, it's the company. The company's fault. Right? They don't want to have it. Uh, we have a limited budget. I could do such brilliant things, but I have a limited budget. So another, another thing is holding me back. It's always the other things. And I think that's the general perspective, uh, perception of how we grow up along society. And then, taking the leadership uh, position, at one point you realize, okay, the me, me, me is maybe not the best way to achieve things. The the team, the smaller us, a little, a small group of people is maybe a lot more powerful. That is why we have team-based experiences in Isaac. We work in small teams because we think that a team, as a multiplier, is more able to achieve more things. Right? So my contribution to the team and then the accumulated result of the team has a higher value, it's more worth <coughs> than, my, than what I could do on my own as an individual. So a team can achieve more than an individual, right? So, and that is something that, is, that seems to be very, very easy to understand, right? But sometimes that is actually very difficult. Still, it is the others that are holding us back. So the same in Isaac, you're working in a team, one of your teammates is not being completely contributing his work or is not meeting his deadlines, it's the others who are holding us back. That is why we are not achieving things. And in, in this, case, most of the people get stuck in this model. I think it's not necessarily that, because you understood it's not only about your ego, it's not only about yourself, it's also about other people and your value that you create for other people in your environment in order to achieve something greater. Yet it is the other people that hold you back. And then, if you, if you go on this kind of intense leadership journey that I have been going through, you realize something that is really difficult to anticipate and is really difficult to understand. Um, it's not so difficult to understand, actually. It's more difficult to accept for yourself. And that is the larger we. The larger we is when you perceive your leadership activity and everything that you do in a larger context than just your environment. So it's just a little bit abstract, right? The larger we is like humanity. The larger we is my entire community, my society that I live in. It's my entire ISAC that is doing things in the context of all other organizations. And if I have an attitude that whatever I do, I contribute best to the larger we, to my community, to my society, to the population on our planet, then I'm willing to push this larger we, the human race for instance, forward. I want to push things forward. And my contribution, for me intrinsically to be accepted, is on a higher level than just I do my work in a team. And that is my contribution. I contribute in a team or wherever because I want to push something forward. I want to develop the larger we. And then you realize suddenly, it is not the others that is holding back. It is only me. It is my limited understanding, my limited capability of not valuing the behavior, or validating the behavior of other people. It is me who is not able to contribute as much as possible. If things are getting fucked up, it is me who couldn't prevent the things. It's me who couldn't forecast things. And it's only my contribution that is counting in that case. It's only me who's holding back. If I was better in a certain situation, then maybe the entire thing has worked out. And now imagine, this is an individual thought. Uh, individual understanding on how I create value to other people. If that was a common thought on the entire planet, or a, an entire society or community would think like that, then I, I believe the world would be a little bit of a better place. Because people would understand, it is not the other people, I do not constantly have to complain about everybody else. First of all, I look in myself, and I look at the things that I have done wrong. And there are always things that you could do better. And you try to improve yourself. And 
Now imagine that everybody would try to improve himself rather than complaining about other people. How much better would that make our world? And I think this is an amazing idea, but it's extremely difficult to accept because we are, we are kind of, as human beings, we are attention-seeking. And in that model, it means I am not the center of attention. It is not about me. Whatever I do is not about me. What, uh, whatever I do is about other people and creating <coughs> value for the people around me. And I think that is a beautiful thing about volunteering. <coughs> volunteering particularly is something where you do not necessarily expect a return, especially not a materialistic return. You expect development and learning, but in the end, what you do in volunteering, you give to other people. You, you are willing to give to other people. And by this act of not putting yourself into the center of attention, but trying to create as much value for everybody else, you receive a lot. And that is the entire idea of volunteering. And I think it's very important to, to keep in mind, you guys are volunteers. You're not just Isaacers, you're volunteering. right? And volunteering means I do things and I do not expect a return. And I give, and that is how I receive. And that is how the entire organization is built up. People put everything in, they give for other people, they create value for other people, and at the end of the journey, they receive a lot of things. That is personal development, personal awareness, strength, and so on and so on, right? So that is the entire model on an abstract, conceptual basis um, of, of working in Isaac, of being a volunteer. And now, to wrap the things up, let's see how much time I have. Exactly one minute, perfect. Not perfect. Um, <laughs> I'll just give you a couple of advices because, I mean, I've, been, I've done a lot of things in Isaac and I have seen many people on new conferences and I have seen only a few people going beyond their local committee. And I give you a very, very clear advice, go beyond your local committee. Do more. If you wait, nothing will happen. Isaac will not automatically develop you just because you are a member of Isaac. You need to do things. Right? This is the alarm clock that I'm all the time. <laughs> it's fine. You need to do things. You need to get out there and actually do things. Isaac will never kick your ass. You always need to do things. It is your entrepreneurial thinking and it's your contribution to everything else and your willingness to do more that is keeping this organization running. And I urge you, if you, if you want to decide that Isaac is a platform where you can develop, then you have to do something for that. There will be nobody, nobody telling you, you should do this or that. People might give you a recommendation, but nobody will kick your ass. You need to take a decision of who you want to be and how you want to take Isaac uh, as part of your life. Right? And this platform is unique. And let me tell you another thing, the time is only now. There will not, there will not be another Isaac coming in 10 years. Then you will be somewhere caught up in your work life. And you will never have the, the platform again to play in a sandbox and try and fail. You will never have this possibility again. This must be very clear for you. So Isaac opens you a lot of doors. You have a bazillion opportunities with Isaac. You can go on exchange, you can go on, I don't know how many thousands of different exchanges. You can go to conferences, you can work in teams, you can be a team leader, you can step up, become your executive board. You maybe once end up at Isaac International. It's a long way to go there, but still, maybe at one point, and I think, on a different, looking at you guys, many of you, or some of you, will end up in the next executive board. That must be very clear to you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just to insert this idea for you guys. So, you need to pass the threshold of the many doors that Isaac is opening for you. Try things, try out things. You cannot lose. If you don't like things, okay, I'll not do it again. If I think international conferences suck, then I'll never go again to an international conference. Normally that never happens. <laughs> and especially conferences, especially conferences. Guys, go to conferences. Conferences are peak experiences in your Isaac life. You have operational work and you have conferences. And conferences are great fun. They are a source of inspiration. You meet new people, you make new friendships. You see other places, you travel to other countries. You see different cultures. You learn so much on conferences. Conferences are the most important tool that we have. There are regional conferences coming up. Your regional conference will be in the beginning of January. 
apply to this regional conference. It's a great possibility, I promise. <coughs> and last but not least, your, your, so what you, your urge should be is to live Isaac. <coughs> not just, I have Isaac in my curriculum, wow, great. That will not help you anything, with anything, right? Live your Isaac experience. Try to build it into your life as good as possible. And I know this is time consuming, and I know it's going to be difficult with your studies, but 100,000 people on this planet can manage that right now. This is the number of Isaac numbers. So I, I, I believe you guys could do it as well. And I'll leave you with, with the last idea and vortex animation. It's great, right? And I showed that to you already. The idea to live Isaac is not necessarily about Isaac. It's about thinking about the fact that if your life is your message to the world, make sure it's inspiring. If I want to be an inspired person, and I want to be inspiring for other people, then what can I do in my life with that? My life is my message to everybody else. I only have one life. Live your Isaac experience. Go out there and try things. It's going to be an amazing journey. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. It's going to be stressful. It's going to be absolutely worth it. Thank you very much.